Hello there guys, welcome to episode 6 of how to program in C++. Today, as I mentioned last week, we're going to learn to make a very simple calculator using some new input functionality that we will learn about. So, let's get right in. This is probably going to be a fairly short episode, hopefully, because there's very little to teach. We're pretty much putting things together. First things first, we need to learn about how to get input from the user. So, it's very simple. Uh, it works very much like outputting to the console, except from the opposite way around. So let's start by put C out. Use we're going to use C out to output a message asking the user to put input a number. So please enter a number, and then let's. Uh, I guess I'll put a colon at the end and put a space, just in case. Okay, semicolon at the end of that line, as it is a statement. Now, we need somewhere to store this number that this user is going to enter in. So let's make ourselves a variable. Uh, let's call it uh, input. Sounds simple. It's not reserved, so we're fine. Okay. Now, the, the function that we're going to use is called cin all one word, same way that you would type C out, except from this time, the pointy brackets are going in the opposite direction. So two pointy brackets facing to the right, and then we have to give it the location that we want to store this data at, which is the input variable that we have taken in. Uh, now, an easy way to remember which way to put your pointy brackets, as this can become confusing at times, um, when you're typing C out, you're outputting to the console, right? So you're trying to point the you're trying to point the brackets into the C out function because you're putting information into this C out function. On the other hand, when you're taking information in and you're using the C in function, you're trying to put data into the variable. So you point the brackets into the variable. Uh, hope that hopefully that'll help you remember a little bit. Uh, now let's finally see out pointy brackets again, and then I'm gonna do a new line character which is backwards slash n, and then you have entered colon, and then stream in input semicolon. Now let's run this and see what happens. Please enter a number thirty two. You have entered 32. Fantastic. So it's all working out great. In fact, CN has given us a line break regardless, which is quite nice. But anyway, let's take a very quick look at these pointy brackets a little bit more in depth. You can see we've been talking about operators last week. Well, this is another operator. This is actually a bitwise operator. However, in this context, it means something entirely different from if I was to use it in another context. This is because it has been overloaded. Uh, this is a very advanced topic, which we're going to be talking about way in the future. But again, I like to give you guys as much information as possible early on, just so you know and not to be confused when you see that elsewhere and it's doing something else. It's because this has seven different functionalities depending on where it is and whether or not it has been overloaded. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, let's combine what we have here with last week's lesson. Let's make a very simple calculator. We're going to add two numbers together and uh, get an output for and output a result when they've been added together or to subtracted from each other. So let's make space for two numbers. So I'm gonna take away input and put in num1 comma num2 and we're gonna put in result again. This is very similar to last time's episode except from instead of putting in the number ourselves we're gonna ask the user for the numbers. So we're gonna change this C out to please enter the first number and then we're gonna keep this C in and then we're gonna write another C out please oops enter the second number and then another colon space semicolon okay and then we're gonna do another C in and this time we're gonna input stream into the num2 variable uh, but notice I've forgotten to change input, so let's change input to num1. Good, good. So what we're doing so far is asking the user for a number, putting the value that they enter in into the num1 variable that we have already declared. Same thing for num2. Now, 
now that we have that, let's do the arithmetic. Let's set result equals num1 plus num2. Very simple. We went over this last week. Just adds these two variables together, the result, the value of these two variables together, and sets result to that result. Um, finally, let's output the result. Uh, we're going to have to change this message so it makes a bit more sense. Uh, so let's say, uh, mm, we'll we'll actually put in the variables. So I'm going to put num1 outside of quotation marks. Now I'm going to put another. Uh, double pointy brackets and then I'm gonna put plus with a space and then another space and more pointy brackets num2 more pointy brackets more quotation marks is equal to and then colon and then space and finally more pointy brackets and result and let's remove all that input stuff afterwards from earlier on and I will put in one more set of pointy brackets and quotation marks and then a full stop and a line break. Okay, so all of this together is our very first functional program, program that will do different things every time you run it. So let's hope there's no errors. Build and run that son of a bee. And so let's enter in a number. 12 plus 14 equals 26. You finally have a way to work out these really difficult mathematical problems. You have created your very first calculator. Sadly, you have to rerun this calculator every time you want to see the result. Well, you want to do a mathematical problem. But wow, that was an unlikely answer. Great. Got Satan following me around. Anyway, <laughs> back to this. So, and you can do whatever you want with this calculator that we've made. You can change it to a subtraction. So instead of plus, uh, minus, play that. And 12 minus 6 is equal to 6. Fantastic. So it's all working. You can play about with this however you want. Have, feel free. In fact, I encourage you greatly to try and mess around with this. See what you can come up with. One final thing that I want to get out of the way whilst we're here is you can, in fact, do something that looks like, well, let's, let's take out what we have here. And I'm going to just take away the result variable because we're not going to need this for this. This is just extra stuff, gravy, if you will, on at the end. Uh, let's ask for two uh, numbers. So, C out, please enter two Whoops, two numbers, colon, space. And then I'll, I'll put a line break at the end, just in case. Actually, let's not bother with that. Let's just put it like that. Okay, so let's do a C in, put it into num1, and then let's do another C in and put it into num2. Now this is not a good thing to do because it will be very confusing for the user. They'll have to enter a number, hit enter, and then they'll have no further prompts before they have to enter in another number. But I just want to show you this because it's a thing you can do. Uh, build it and it will ask you for two numbers. Enter 12, enter 43, and it will end. Uh, maybe we should output these numbers just to have some kind of final result on this. You have entered both and then input num1 and then space and space 20 brackets num2 semicolon so fire that up enter your, your two numbers again and it will spit back out you have entered both 123 and 432 now you can actually do this in one line in the same way that we have been doing with c out in even like here you can see an example of that where we put multiple pointy bracket operators, um, you can do the same thing with C in. Now there's not very many applications for this, it's kind of un not very user friendly to ask for two bits of data at once, but you can do this. You can uh, add an extra set of pointy brackets to the right and the next variable and it will ask you for two different values. In the same way, you could do this for several values. So for example, I'm just gonna put num1 in again. Let's do it again. And this time it will ask you for three of these uh, numbers. So 
that's a little thing to note. A little bit of extra stuff that you'll probably never use, but hey, I put it in there anyway. <laughs> so, next time, we will go over some if statements, most likely. Uh, I should stop promising things when I'm not actually planned ahead. Okay, <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. Next, we, next time, we will do something fun, regardless. So, see you then.